Ooh. That's warm. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today we're gonna check out this, a Casus 10-in-1 USB-C hub with a NVMe SSD enclosure. Maybe you have a computer without much in the way of expandability, a limited number of USB ports, and no way to upgrade or expand your storage. I'm thinking the new M1 Max or any ultra portable laptop or Chromebook, this could be a solution for more storage and connectivity, or you can even use it to turn a portable device like the new 2021 iPad Pro or even my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus into a full desktop setup. We're gonna check that out, but first let's get it out of the box and see what it comes with, go over the technical stats, and then I'll test it out. So, Inside the box is a box, and inside this box is a way to open it. Okay, is the hub, and what looks to be about a one foot or 30 centimeter USB-C to USB-C cable. There is a rubber case for the hub, and then a thermal pad and a couple of little rubber studs that are gonna hold in your NVMe drive. And then of course, the instruction manual. So I guess I should get to RTFMing so I know what I'm talking about in this next part coming up. Okay. I'm educated and this is the hub. So let's go over the 10 things in the one hub. On the one side, we have an HDMI output and the manual says it's capable of 4K 60 FPS, which means it's working on the USB 3.1 Gen 2 display port 1.4 alt mode. Next up is the one gigabit ethernet port. On the opposite side is the USB-C input to connect the hub to your device and USB-C power delivery input up to 100 watts. The hub does support USB-C power protocols, so you can power your device through the hub, which is nice in my case, as I don't need to use a second USB-C port to get power to my laptop. It's also important to note that this power delivery runs in both directions. So if you don't have a power source connected to the hub, then the hub and anything attached to it is being powered by your device. Device. So in my case, again, with an ultra portable, that'll affect battery life. Okay, onto the top of the hub and we have a USB 3.0 or now known as 3.1 Gen 1, five gigabit per second type A port, a USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second type A and type C port, a 3.5 millimeter two in one headphone microphone jack, and there is an SD and micro SD card reader. Finally, if we just lift off this cover here is the m.2 slot which can accept pcie nvme ssds and sata ngff ssds up to eight terabytes in the 2230 through 2280 lengths with transfer speeds of 10 gigabits per second for nvme and five gigabits per second for sata for today's testing i'll be using this sabert rocket q nvme ssd this is a pcie gen 3 drive and this hub will support gen 4 nvme ssds over the 3.1 Gen 2 USB standard, but you're restricted to the 10 gigabit per second speed, which works out to 1,255 megabytes per second of bandwidth, which realistically works out to read write speeds about 1,000 megabytes per second. While this Gen 3 SSD is capable of three times that. My point is it's a waste to use a Gen 4 SSD in here as it too will be stuck at the same 1K read write speeds. Now, if you have one on hand, it'll work. Just don't spend the extra money on it. Okay, I guess I can get this SSD installed. Now, finally, the device I'm using to test this hub is my Framework laptop. If you want more info on Framework and this modular, repairable, and upgradable laptop, be sure to check out my review. But the point of using this is that the USB-C ports are all 40 gigabit per second USB-4 ports. So there's no possibility of the device bottlenecking the hub's performance. 
it can operate to its max potential. I'll also be doing some comparison tests connecting the USB hub to a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port on my editing rig and on a Thunderbolt 3 port on my 2021 M1 iMac. I think that's it for the intro. Let's just get this thing tested and see how it does. All right. It's the next day. I spent, I don't know, like 12 hours testing this thing. And the first thing I noticed right away is this hub gets very warm, very fast while basically doing nothing. Now I don't have a fancy expensive thermal camera, but I do have thermal couples. So I attached one to the top of the hub with some thermal tape. And right now the hub is at 35 degrees Celsius or on around 95, 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't too bad, but it's not doing anything right now. In fact, I even took the SSD out and unplugged the power delivery. So right now it's pulling about five volts at 0.3 amp. So about 1.4, 1.5 watts of power from the laptop and is basically converting it all to heat. So the first thing I did was asked the cases if this was normal and they said yes that basically to pack all this high speed expansion into this compact form factor it's going to run warm now i had an idea of what was causing the heat so i took the hub apart to confirm and in fact found that along with inductors resistors and capacitors for power regulation on the top of the pcb on the bottom of the pcb there are about a half a dozen of these little square chips which our USB 3.1 Gen 2 hub controllers because this hub is much different than say something like this. This hub takes a single USB input and divides it equally across all the ports. So the more devices you connect, the slower each port gets. If this is connected to a 10 gigabit USB port and you add seven devices to it, each one of those devices can only operate at 1.4 gigabits. Now in those expansion processors in here, they can take the data packets coming in and out of the hub and route them to and from the various ports. It's the same general principle as a network switch. Data goes to and from a central source and is routed to and from the correct port on the hub. That's how you can have multiple 10 gigabit ports from a single 10 gigabit connection. And like any processor, these USB microprocessors get hot. So a Acasis uses the aluminum case to dissipate the heat through a thermal pad. This is a good way to keep the board cool and operating correctly. However, this can add heat to the installed M.2 SSD, which will generate its own heat, possibly leading to the SSD thermal throttling. So I kept the temperature probe attached during the testing. And to test the hub, I ran multiple synthetic and practical benchmarks to test the speed and reliability of the hub and its ports. A case claims 1000 megabytes per second read write speeds on an installed nvme drive so i tested that with crystal disk mark and i did in fact get average read and write speeds just over a thousand megabytes per second now of course those are sequential read write best case scenario speeds so to test realistic speeds i transferred 16 video files ranging from a couple hundred megabytes to 4.4 gigabytes all totaling about 25 gigabytes to and from the hub so from the hub ssd to the laptop the files transferred at between 750 and 800 megabytes per second which is about 35 to 40 seconds transferring the 25 gigs from the computer to the hub ran at 540 to 550 megabytes per second on average and took between 47 and 53 seconds to complete so the nvme ssd works as advertised, those drops in speeds from the benchmark results are about normal for real world scenarios. There's typically a 20% drop in actual read speeds. The write speeds were maybe a little lower than normal at about 45% decrease. I typically see about a 35 to 40% drop from the crystal mark speeds. Now, to test the super speed USB ports, I used another NVMe external drive, this iNeo, which I have another Sabret Rocket NVMe SSD installed. And I tested both Type A and Type C 3.1 Gen 2 ports, and I got the same exact results as I did from the internal SSD. I also used this to test the 3.1 Gen 1 5 gigabit port, and as expected, all the speeds were reduced by 
a little more than half. I further tested the connection between the super speed ports and the internal NVMe, and I ended up with about the same speeds as I got from the five gigabit port. 25 gigs from the external drive to the hub transferred at about 325 megabytes per second and from the hub to the external at about 240 to 250 megabytes per second. So it looks like there are in fact 10 gigabit connections from the M.2 and the two 3.1 Gen 2 ports to and from the connected device, but the connection between the ports and the M.2 may be a five gigabit per second. I don't know this for certain, but that's what the results tell me. Now, the one issue I ran into was when I tried to simultaneously transfer data from both the external drive and the hub to the laptop, I basically split the files between the two and then sent them to the PC. And every time they both started at their top speeds of about 800 megabytes per second, but then I'd lose one or both of the drives and window would go into this loop trying to reconnect the drives until I just have to pull the cord. Now I am running Windows 11, which is in beta. So I did try this on my Windows 10 workstation with the same results. This can be happening for a couple of reasons, but I think the NVMe controller in here just doesn't get along with the NVMe controller in here because I repeated the test using this one terabyte USB 3.2 NVMe drive and it worked. In fact, the transfer speeds of this actually passed one gigabyte per second. I did repeat the test using a much slower SATA external drive and the process was successful at full expected speeds for both of the drives. Next, I tested the SD card readers and this turns out is a hub in a hub. You can use both slots simultaneously, but the bandwidth is split between the two. I used a SanDisk Ultra Plus 130 megabyte per second micro SDXC and a SanDisk Extreme Pro 170 megabyte per second SDXC to test the reader. And I got consistent read speeds of 86 megabytes per second for both of the cards, which is about exactly what I get from every reader I own. This is pretty typical of USB 3.1 Gen 1 SD readers. And while reading from both cards simultaneously, the bandwidth is split between the two. Now, I don't have a UHS-2 CF card to test, but from a five gigabit reader, you should get closer to like 125 megabyte per second transfers. Now, to finish off the ports on the top, I plugged my Sennheiser 598 into the headphone jack and streamed some Lo-Fi Girl, and the sound profile wasn't great. It was severely over amplified. I had to turn the volume down to about 20% for comfortable listening, while anything over 75 to 80% was just distorted. However, the microphone input did work well as I'm recording this voiceover through the port right now. Next, the ethernet port worked and delivered the max bandwidth my home network is capable of. And finally, the HDMI output, which is also something I can't test to its full potential. It does deliver 4K resolution with good color accuracy. However, my 4K displays have two DP 1.4 capable display ports and can do 4K at 60 Hertz, but the one HDMI input is only HDMI 1.4, so it can only do 4K at 30 Hertz. I never used the HDMI, so that didn't even occur to me until I just tried this hub, but the Parade Tech DP converter chip it uses is capable of converting USB-C DisplayPort 1.4 alt mode to HDMI 2.0, which is capable of 4K by 2K at 60 Hertz. So if your device has DP 1.4 alt mode and you have an HDMI 2.0 display, you should be good to go for 4K 60 FPS. Now, I did repeat all the testing on both my workstation PC and my 24 inch iMac, which my daughter has now. And the results were all the same with a couple of caveats. First, I did have to use a different NVMe SSD on the iMac which was properly formatted, but the read write speeds of this one are still much higher than the max this hub can do. So the results were all the same. I also only tested the HDMI output on a 1080p display with the Mac, but that did do 1080p 60 Hertz with no problem. That's all the testing I did, but 
to return to my initial concern, the heat, well, it turned out not to be a big factor. The hottest the hub got was 48 Celsius, and I never saw the SSD temp pass 52 Celsius, and that was during a 20 minute torture test. Now, don't get me wrong, 48C is hot. That's almost like 120 Fahrenheit. You don't wanna hold this thing in your pocket while it's operating, but in terms of the hardware, that's not bad at all. Max operating temp on the SSD is like 70 to 75 C, I think. Plenty of thermal headroom. Now, before I get into conclusions, I just wanna do a quick demo because this is more than a hub or external storage for a computer or laptop because it actually does conform to USB 3.1 Gen 2 standards. You can use this with almost any USB-C device. And if your device supports USB-C alt modes like my Galaxy Note 10, I can actually use this to turn this into this, a full desktop setup. I have a full 1080p display, ethernet connection, mouse and keyboard. I even have access to the NVMe drive if I reformat it to the correct format. And the phone is staying charged with the power pass through. I can use all the apps on my phone. I can check and reply to email. I can stream some online video if I plugged in some speakers. I can get some work done in MS Office. I can even play games if I actually played mobile games and sometimes that's hit or miss depending on the game and if you can convert it from touch control to mouse and keyboard input. But the point is this $100 hub can turn the cell phone in your pocket into a pretty decent productivity or entertainment workstation. I actually had the Samsung Dex dock when I first got this phone and it didn't work as well as this or have this much expansion. Definitely not an internal NVMe drive. But Let's wrap this up and the pros and cons. First, the cons, and again, the hub does get physically hot, but it doesn't affect performance. And because of the actual hardware, I don't think there's anything that can be done for that short of like installing a small fan. Now it does come with this rubber case. I didn't use it as I didn't want to insulate the hot hub, but this can at least protect you from grabbing a hot hub because I think 48 Celsius or 118 Fahrenheit is the minimum temp that can produce first degree burn. So it is legitimately a hazard, probably more so for like a small child that may decide to grab it. But the headphone jack wasn't great. There's just too much going on in there to effectively include good quality audio filtering hardware or a good quality DAC. The pros outside of a Thunderbolt hub, which are stupidly expensive, it is the fastest hub I've ever tested. Now I've tested NVMe enclosures that were as fast like this one, but none with a high speed NVMe enclosure and two super speed USP ports, not for $99. So I think the cases did a pretty good job positioning this hub at about the right price in the market. Just a little bit more expensive than hubs with less expandability and not quite expensive as hubs with the same features. Now, if you want more info on the Acasis 10-in-1 hub and current pricing, there's a link in the description below. And coincidentally, the like and subscribe buttons are down there. So consider giving them a click. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.